Hello everybody and welcome back to our Icon Scout 3D series. This is Nishi here and in this video I will be showing you how you can modify a 3D asset that you've already downloaded. In the last video we saw what Icon Scout is and what it offers and how we can download a 3D asset. Now let's begin this video by downloading something cool. Once you're sure about which asset you want to download, just hit download. In this case, because I want to modify the colors of this particular asset, I'm going to download the blend file. In order to open this .blend file that you just downloaded, you need a free 3D software called Blender. To download and install Blender, just go to blender.org and say download Blender. From here, you should be able to install the latest version of Blender. Once downloaded, Simply follow the steps to complete your installation. Now since I already have Blender installed in my computer, I'm just going to go ahead and open the file that we just downloaded. So once you open the .blend file, this is what your asset file looks like. Currently you have your asset right here in the middle and then there's a square surrounding it. This square is nothing but your camera view. Which means, this is exactly what your asset is going to look like in the final render in terms of its composition. In order to get out of the camera view, you can simply move about in your viewport. If you are new to Blender and are unsure of how you could do this, here are some quick steps. You could always use these tools here that are present on the right. Click and hold on the magnifying glass icon to zoom in and zoom out. Similarly, click and hold on the hand icon to pan your scene. And if you want to move about freely, just make use of this gizmo here. Just press and hold and move about. If you don't want to use these tools that are here on the right, you could always make use of some shortcuts. And here's how you could do it. If you want to simply move around in your scene, press and hold your middle mouse button and move about. If you want to zoom in and zoom out of your screen, you can just use the scroll wheel of your mouse to do the same. In order to pan your scene, just press and hold the shift key on your keyboard. Along with that, press and hold your middle mouse button and pan your scene. So you could go left to right and top to bottom. Now that we know how to navigate and move about in our viewport, let's just go and change some color. So right now, the colors of your asset are there. But at this point, you're not able to see those because you're in the solid mode. In order to see the colored version, we will have to view this asset in the rendered view and this can be done by clicking on the last icon here on the top right corner. This shows you the rendered view and this is exactly how your asset will look once it's rendered and exported. So in this case, I want to change the blue and the orange of my headphones and I want to make sure that they represent my brand colors. In order to change the color of your asset, click on the object whose color you want to change. So I'm going to just click on the bottom part here. So once you choose your object, you still can't see the color palette or where you can change the colors anywhere. For that, you need to navigate to this material properties tab, which is right here on your right hand side panel. So once I do this, I can see that I have a bunch of properties here at the bottom and I have all the colors or all the different materials that have been applied to my asset present right here. So right now I have the white, which, which is this part. Then I have the blue, which is the outer side of my headphones on the headband and the bottom part of my headphones. And then I also have the orange, which is applied over here. Now let us proceed by changing the color of the blue that we want here. So in order to change the blue, you can just click on this particular attribute or this particular channel, which says the base color. So once you do that, you can see that a color wheel with a few options here at the bottom pop up. You can click on the RGB tab here and play with these values to choose the color you like. You can also use the HSV values here and change the values over here to choose the color that you want. Or you could simply copy and paste your brand colors right here. So I have a color code of my brand ready. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in my hex value and hit enter. So once I do that, I can see that my blue has now changed the mint green that is of my brand color. So now let's do the same thing for orange. So I'm just going to click on orange and now change the color over here. I'm just going to play with the color wheel and choose a color that complements my brand green well. 
so let me let me see okay maybe a contrasting yellow orange would go well okay perfect so I want to change the mint green that's here on top I want to keep the one at the bottom as is so I'm just going to click the top part here so I want to change the blue so I'm going to click on the blue part so once you do that you can do the same thing you click on the base color and you start changing colors but what is happening right now is it's changing the bottom part too because right now the colors of these two components are linked together in order to change the color of just the top part you'll have to unlink its material over here on the right hand side panel where you have your material properties when you choose blue you will be able to see how many times the same material is being used so in this case your blue material is being used two times it's the same material that's being used for the headband over here and the bottom part in order to unlink you can just simply go and click on this number two here so once you do that your material is now renamed to blue 001 because it's not the same anymore if you want to recheck it you could just click the bottom part and you will see that this blue remains just blue it's not renamed right so we'll just go back to the headband and we'll rename this material to headband so once you do this you can see that it's now only changing the color of the top part and it's not affecting the bottom part at all okay perfect i think i'm going to change the inside white part as well so i'm just going to click back here and i'm going to click on the white this time and i'm just going to use the slider here on the right and take it all the way down so that it's now nice and black because now this black complements my color scheme a lot better than the white did and let's just rename our white material to say black so once you do this, you can see that now you very successfully changed the colors of your asset right here. Now that the colors have been changed, let's see how we can manipulate the surface materials. Say the yellow part that you have over here, you want to make it uh, maybe more glossy or more metal like. So in order to do that, just choose your orange material here. It, let's just rename this to yellow. Okay, so now you can simply play with the roughness and the metallic values over here. You can see that as I bring my roughness value down, my yellow part is more shinier and more glossy. Now that you have a nice glossy sort of a surface here for this, maybe you want it, you know, more metal-like or maybe you want to give it a more gold-like feeling. In that case, you can just increase the metallic value. Similarly, you can play with any of these values here and see how they affect your materials. And that's it. So once you are happy, all you now have to do is just render this asset out. So you could just go to render and say render image. Okay, so once your render is complete, just go to image and say save as. You can choose the location of where you want to save your file as, rename your file. By default, right now your image is being rendered as a PNG with a transparent background. But you could always change this from here and save it as a JPEG if you want to. You can increase the quality to 100% and there you go. I'm also going to save this as a PNG image because I want one with a transparent background and I just saved this. And that's it. We're all done. You can now use these exported images, both PNG and JPEG in any design that you're working on. In the next video, I will show you how you can export the same asset from different angles. So stay tuned for more videos like this. So thank you everybody. This is Nishi signing off and have an awesome rest of the day.